Yo, 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 we are back, man. Damn, it's been how long we did it? I think the last show we did was with ANS. I think it was like three, four weeks ago, I think it was. About three uh, weeks. Yeah, we took a little hiatus, man. Uh, you know, it's summertime, baby. You know what I mean? Uh, we deserve it. You know what I mean? I think I do. <laughs> you know what I mean? So <laughs> I we, certainly do. I mean, yes, you do. Yes, you do, Josh. Especially that you do the FOC every Friday. You do. You know, it's okay to miss a week or two, bro. That's what I'm saying, Josh. Don't be afraid. You know, but uh, we are back, man. I am your boy, Joker, man. I'm here with my brothers, man. I got my West Coast Connect, man. Gomez. Yeah, Gomez Comic Collector, yeah. Just uh, like you said, been out for a minute. I was out of town, and the funny thing is he was out of town when I was back in town and forth. So it was like a pendulum swing in that situation. But I'm glad to hear to talk about comics, talk about things I like to collect and have in my my own personal collection and stuff like that. So, yeah, just ready to go and talk some knowledge when it comes out. Anything you guys gain on it, hopefully. And thank you, everybody on the panel for showing up. Appreciate it. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Definitely, man. Uh, yeah, so uh, James won't be here today, man. Uh, he's out there being thirsty over there in uh, Cape and Cows. Is it Cape and yeah, Cows? <laughs> so Cape and Cows, um, if you yeah. see an eight-foot giant, you already know, man, he's thirsty. All right, all right. <laughs> so uh, I am also, um, I'm here with Josh Grab, man. What's going on, Josh G? What's up? That's it. What's up? How you doing? Yeah. Keep it nice and simple. Started, yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, I will get to the chat in a few, man. Appreciate everybody who reposted on IG, man. Appreciate everybody who came through tonight. Who are showing up little by little tonight, man. I appreciate everybody. I'm um, doing that, man. Showing support and showing love over here in East Beast West. Uh, but first off, we're gonna show. <clears throat> show going. We're gonna show off some friends of the show, guys. Uh, here we got Spidey's Pot of Tumblers, man. Jose Gonzalez, man. It's been a minute. Um, I haven't spoken yeah. to Jose. Man. I gotta hand him up, man. Uh, here. My man Jose Gonzalez makes your custom made powder coated stainless steel tumblers, man. Uh, wallet, keychains, knives. I mean, he could do anything basically, man. Guns, I'm sure, you know, depending what you want, man. You know, <laughs> hit him up on IG, man. Spidey's underscore powder underscore tumblers, man. And tell him East Meets West sent you. All right. Uh, next up is going to be the MIA guy, man. Uh, Mr. Erod 212, man. Uh, Express Comp Pressing Services, man. With the EMW 10 code, guys, get 10% off for your pressing services. Uh, hit him up on IG at Express CVP or hit him up a person on his personal page, man. I prefer you hit him up on his personal page because he gets irritated by that. Just telling that we sent you, all right? <laughs> uh, hit him up by uh, email Express CVP at yahoo.com. Uh, he does CGC and CBCS submissions uh, with CGC. He gives you his 10% on um, discount, guys. Uh, send, him a, send him a double message so it doubly pisses him off. There you go. Yeah. There you go. All right. <laughs> tell him the first one that, you know, Mike sent you the second time. Tell him that Josh sent you, right? <laughs> That's it. And over here, man, shout out to Angie at Skeleton Comics, man. Uh, here you can get your back issues. You can pre-order your books, uh, comic book supplies, action figures, uh, Funko Pops here, man, using the EMW one-time off code, guys. Uh, there's two other on one off codes. Uh, we have uh, what is War uh, New York Warriors, and then we have our uh, Keep It Thorough. Uh, so you know, what is it Thorough 10? I think it's Thorough 10. Thorough, uh, thorough 10, uh, yeah, Thorough 10. So there you go, guys. Those are our friends of the show, guys. Man, and uh, also, you know, real quick, man, yes, we, we're still working with something with ANS. I'm gonna give them a shout out since I still have the little uh, little banner here. There you go, okay. Uh, <laughs> Hit up a ANS over here at IG, man. Uh, here, definitely get pre order your books here with these guys, man. Uh, this is Broski's Connect, right, Broski? Yes, yes, sir. Um, I got some stuff to show off too later down the line. Yeah. Um, right. Actually, from the FOC and picking up some, some, some stuff I wanted to get from my PC, so I'll showcase that later down the line. Definitely, man. And uh, check them out, man. And if you decide to make a pull list, man, you know, just tell them, you know, yes, East Meets West Central, all right. So those are our friends of the show, guys, friends of the show. Uh, and let me get over here to the people in the chat, man. Uh, let me give them a shout-out real quick. Damn. What we have first, we have uh, Back Issue Paulie's in the building, man. We got Comics Are Great. Comics Are Great saying uh, good evening, people. What is going on? Uh, he's saying uh, we got Shin Moen in the house, man. What's going on? My man's going to Terrific Con. Shout-out to him. Uh, we got Hot Foot Teddy. Okay, what's going on? What's up? <laughs> what is going on? Big Remo's in the house. Was good, folks. Was good. Was good, man. All the way from Cali, man. Bro, bro. You already know, man. And then Johnny Funko's in the building. Hey, guys. Uh, we got Lord, Lords of the Long Box. Uh, we got uh, Uncle Tivo, man. Tivo. What's up, Hello, Tio. Right. Yes, yes, man. And we got J2 Ramirez, man. Uh, another Josh over here. Uh, he said, Oral at Holmes, what is going on? What up? What up? You already know, man. Uh, Mr. Josh Grab himself. Uh, he's in the building. Uh, who else we have? We have Wilbert, and 
Let me see. We got Rated Roar, who we made his appearance in um David Sick and the Mint's um yes. live stream. And talking about that, Broski, Broski was on there, right, Broski? Yeah, yeah, it was good, real good show. We had some dope topics. Uh, it's on a uh, David Seeker Mint's uh, YouTube channel, which uh, which 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 he does monthly, like was it once a month? He get us on Tuesday or Wednesday, so it's it's pretty dope. We got some old timer characters in there with some valid information and stuff that we like to talk about comics and shit. So it's really good. Definitely, I, I, I missed. I I would peeked in a little bit, but you know, I was busy coming back home from vacation. I was unpacking and stuff like that. Uh, but you know, I've heard good things. Biggs was saying that you had good topics on there, man. So definitely worth a check out. I'm gonna give him a check out. Uh, and then we got Brickstein and Geek is in the building. What's up, peeps? J Rod Hamon, what is going on, bro? Uh, we got the big bro, Biggie's Comics was good, man. What's up, my East Peace West brothers? What's up, what's up, man? We got Psychoholic Comics is in the building. What's going on, buddy? Nostalgia Express was good. What's going on? Uncanny Swag, what up, what up, kid? All right, thank you everybody for joining us again, man. Uh, I start giving people shout-outs once I see them come through, and I don't, you know, you know. So, uh, first up, man, um, <clears throat> we're gonna be talking about is uh, yo, wow, that's a new one right there for you, old Josh. That, that's yo. a new one, you know, old one, like an old face. There you go, <laughs> Gamma in the building. Gamma. Yo, 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 you know what's funny? This dude came in the shop today that looked just like, like a Puerto Rican version of Gamma. And really? Richie, yeah, I swear to God. And Rich, I when I was up there because uh, Richie was in the front, I'm like, "Yo, that dude looks like Gamma." He's like, "Yo, I was gonna say the same thing." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what up, Gamma? Uh, it's been a minute. It's been a long time, yeah. man. Uh, you know, so yeah, what, what's up with the what's up with the uh, the degenerates? What's up with them? That's what I want to know, Gamma. That's all you, bro. You know, eh? uh, <laughs> he said he must be sexy as fuck. Yeah, there you go. Okay, not sure, really. Man. <laughs> and comment talk with me what is going on man uh so first up we are going to talk about it's gonna mean you know talk about mike morello's cover tunes man here from cbsi guys you already know man uh we've been doing a couple things with cbsi cover tunes cover fire and obviously the foc list that josh does for the man so doing a few things man and today we're doing cover tunes and um this week he is talking about some some convention programs, which is interesting. You know, this is a part two. I've been at MIA, so I haven't been, you know, seeing what's going on in Cover Tunes or Cover Fire for this past few weeks, I should say. Uh, so, yeah, man, he's doing uh, some conventional programs, you know, and um, they're, they're kind of dope, kind of interesting, man. Uh, so first up, we are going to – let me see. Uh, okay, let me remind the guys. He said, as a reminder, I am now including incentive covers in this article. Bravo. <laughs> but none will break the three-digit price barrier. Boom, All right, guys. <laughs> uh, so there you go. I mean, listen, that's what's up, Mike. Wait, you know wait, I mean? wait. None will break the so none over a hundred or none over. Wait, they won't break the three digits. So does that mean they won't break a hundred or they won't break a thousand? We don't know. Maybe it might be a thousand. Who knows? We don't know. Like they won't go into three digits, or they won't break three. They, digits. I think no. I think he meant to say. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not Mike Morello. We're just assuming what he's trying to say. I need some so. clarification on that. Either way, boo. <laughs> All right, man. So we gonna move on, man. And this week, he uh, it's kind of interesting what he's taking on, man. He's taking on some um, uh, some programs that he from comic book conventions, and uh, some of them are pretty badass. I, I'm enjoying it. It's simple art. It's like sketches, basically. You know, uh, these are. For the first one, this is an example. We have from Detroit Triple Fan Fair Program Report number two from 1970, covered by Frank Frazetta, guys. Frank Frazetta, as you know, is one of the best artists of all time in comic book history, guys. In my opinion, I should say he's up there. He's up there. Top five, maybe. Top ten, you know, in some, you know. Uh, so, yeah, dope-ass cover, Conan. Uh, yeah. Then we got moving on to this one here, Detroit Triple Fan Fair Pro Program Progress, excuse me, report number three. Also 1970 from Neil that Adams. Cool. Yeah, that one is badass. It's real nice, man. I like the simplicity on this one, guys. Uh, so pretty dope, man. Uh, and here, let me just read a little bit what he wrote down, man. He said, yep, you read it correctly for Zeta Conan and Adams Batman. And on really early convention programs, these are really rare, and I have no idea what they would even sell for if you did if they did if they did pop up, excuse me. Uh, but I need them. By the way, Adams does a Conan on 1972 number one as well. So look out for that one, guys. Uh, so we're moving on to this one right here, which is uh, Broski's favorite, you know, of all time yeah, right cool. here, man. <laughs> yeah, we got the, Thunder, the, the, the Delaware Valley comic. Uh, what is this? Consortium? 
uh, from 1976, a.k.a. Sanja Khan. Sanja. Not Sonia. Sanja. <laughs> Uh, from covered up by Frank Thor, man. Wait a minute, Sanja. No, man. Do you really pronounce pronounce it Sanja, or are you just fucking around? Well, there is a J, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, what does that mean? Do you do you pronounce Jose Jose? Some some can, some can, I guess. Uh, so I thought I was you for a long time was with the I A, not J. Or am I wrong? Am I wrong? Correct me. What? I thought Sonia is an IA, not a JA. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, but but it's not. <laughs> okay, it's, does San, does Sanja like ganja? No, now 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 you're gonna go with Ganya. Ganja, okay. ganja is with a G, though, no? Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. I, I don't. Listen, we go going to like, oh, like we don't have we don't have James here to do this English, you know, correction and shit, but. You know, we're going with this here, and we're going to be going on with uh, 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 Frank Thorne on this cover here of um, Red Sonia. Uh, and then my man Mike Morello here, he puts down, Man, oh man, uh, do I really want a copy of this beautiful Frank Thorne cover uh, with art not featured anywhere else? This one is really rare, hence the terrible picture, uh, but shouldn't be too expensive. Uh, when you find it for $50, should be uh, a decent copy. Uh, dude, um, Broski. Uh, I know you like Red Sonia. This is this would be somewhere in your in your in your radar, right? Yeah, if, if I see it, yeah, in a while, yeah. Mm. I'll pick it up. Right, right. So shout out to Frank Thorne, man. Obviously, All right. So we're moving on, we're moving on to some more. Uh, what is this? It's like I don't know who it is on the cover there. Uh, but it's George Perez, though. George Perez is the artist of this uh, Heroes Convention from 1987, guys. Uh, my man, Mike Moroli, he put in an absolutely outstanding Perez cover in a really rare program from an early year of HeroCon, Heroes Con. I need this one too. Uh, no idea what these would sell for, you know, but still, you know, he, you know, he would want it. Ah, shit. Listen, anything Perez, man, I think is an amazing, you know, George Perez is, is one of my favorite artists too, man. Uh, he's awesome, especially when it comes to Teen Titans, man. You know, he does amazing work on there. Uh, you know, so guys, what I think about this one? It's dope. Okay. It's dope. There's a lot, a lot of detail in the background. Uh, George Perez, you know, he's one of the iconic, like you said before, about uh, what was the name? Uh, what the the guy you said earlier, but I forgot the name. What Frank? But, uh, no, um, the one previous. Oh, uh, Frazetta. Frank Frazetta. Frazetta. Yeah, Frazetta. That's another one in the park that's around that range. Um, you know, a lot of people. I don't think he does conventions anymore. Correct me if I'm wrong. George Perez. I know he he ended it like a year or two years ago. He was doing mass conventions, so. So, something that's gonna be hard to sign in the future, but dope ass thing you see in the wild. I, I think he's like I think he minimizes uh cons. I think he's only like staying like in California, well, not California, on Florida, doing cons over there. I think that's that's what he's doing. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, awesome, awesome press cover. Uh, so we're moving on, man. <clears throat> we're moving on to this one right here. Oh, uh, here they yeah, misspelled it. It's supposed to be EC Lives fan um convention from 1972, covered oh, done by uh Wally right? And then um. <laughs> My man uh, Morello puts down again. My apologies for the censorship, uh, but this cover is over the top, amazing, and perfect addition uh, to a wood collection. It is really rare, but only goes for about forty to fifty dollars when it comes um, up for sale. So there you go, man. All right, man. I like the like, I like, I like the art on this one. Kind of gives me like the Mad TV type look on this. Uh, you know, on this cover here, man. Uh, what y'all think? This is dope. Uh, my Reminds me of Dave Stevens when I see it. That's that when I see the art. It, even though I, while he would, I get a little Dave Stevens vibe because he draws the girls kind of like in his art, kind of like that the space, space backgrounds and space art. Okay, okay, okay. Well, what about you, Bomb Josh? I mean, I can appreciate the art. It's pretty neat. Um, I don't know. I don't really have anything more to say about, <laughs> about <laughs> that. <laughs> Wally World reminds you of fucking. I'm thinking of was it Wally? Wally Wally Wood reminds me of Wally World. The fucking, uh, what was that shit? Uh, just the uh, fucking National Lampoons. Vacation. National Lampoons Vacation. <laughs> all right. So there you go, guys, man. All right, so we're moving on from there to this one, All-American Con Book Con uh, from 1977, oh, covered, yeah. the, covered by Alex Schomburg. Front cover and the back cover is Jim Steranko. All right, guys. Uh, so, yeah, man, my man uh, Morello has put this, man. Uh, let me put, let me see. This is an amazing way to get, um, Scomberg cap over and can be had for 50 ish, 50 ish. I'm assuming, uh, 
Add in the fact that you can get a Starenko back cover of awesomeness, and on this one is a steal for twice the price. Uh, thanks to CBS, CBSI's very own Topher for pointing this one out to me. Uh, guys, man, uh, this one here, is, you know, it seems seems like it's changing up now, right? It seems a little bit more modern with these unconventional um, programs, so it's kind of similar to what it is to date now. Uh, you know, I mean, besides, you know, I mean, this this type of art you don't see anymore, though. Uh, what y'all think? I like I like the just the, how it's red, white, and black. I like that, you know, he's fighting. <laughs> it, it's kind of funny, like what you can put on a what you could have put on a cover then, and what you can't. You know, exactly. he's fighting like you know, uh, where did I see in there? Like you know, like Arabic people and and uh, I can't tell. Is that like a German soldier down there? And I don't know. Yeah, you're right. I don't know, but it, it, they won't get away right now, man. You can't do. You can't put the staple cover out right now. You know, with shit going on now. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like fighting different ethnicities like that. Like basically portraying them as you know bad people. You just, I don't know. I don't think you'd probably get away with that one. I like it though. Yeah, it's different. Uh, so we're moving on from that one to shit that we really recognize now, man. We were going to New York Comic Book Spectacular from nineteen. And, and now I'm going to be waiting for it. And Josh is a racist. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Uh, cover done by Mike Mignola, guys, man. Uh, it just is, this is right here, man. Um, Hellboy on the cover here. Uh, badass, dope Mignola cover. Uh, Broski, what you think? Yeah, dope. It's, it's Hellboy. Hellboy. I, I, I have. I don't read that much. I wish I read more of him, but uh. What's it called Mike Magnolia does an awesome job when it comes to um, Hellboy. I mean, of course, you create him, but uh, I do have his first appearance in color. I don't have that Comic Con exclusive one. That's another one that, that he has his very first appearance, I think, in, a, in black and white sketched. But uh, this is one I have in the PC, but I haven't seen it yet in a while. But eh, you, you never know one day. So it's dope, dope ass cover. Yo, real quick, I forgot. Let me read what he put down here, man. He put down, using the Seeds of Destruction, number one cover. This program is a nice early Hellboy appearance of collectors of such things. Mignola's work uh, is so unique, and obviously it's Hellboy we all want from him. Uh, this is a nice and inexpensive way to do it. 30-ish, it goes around. Just snag you one of these bad boys. Again, thanks to Topher for reminding him on this one, man. So, yeah, Topher, there's two of them right, yeah. right there, man. Yeah, shout out to Topher Grace. <laughs> <laughs> uh man, so we moved on from Hellboy uh to over here, man. Bacon Bacon four from nineteen seventy eight, uh covered by Boris. All right, uh you know, I don't know, man. You got the censorship again, bro, on this one. I don't know, but let me see what my man Morello put down. He put um yeah, if you can get away with having nudie covers in your house, you need this one. Uh Boris, sexy <laughs> rare, cheap, check, 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 check. Also Stalin, Bruner, and Chan. Work in this one. I really hate con censoring art, but this is a family site. Uh, so fifteen to twenty dollars, uh, is, it goes around, man. Uh, so, guys, what y'all think of this? It's, it's in my alley, but I, if I find it, I'll get it. But yeah, no, it's, it's dope. It's a dope ass cover. I like it. Kind of reminds me of I don't know why, I, because it doesn't really look like it, like the girl, but kind of the rest of it. Maybe it's because of how Vampirella and the first Vampirella issue, it's like the moon. I, I don't know. It kind of gives me that vibe. Okay, good point. Good point. I, I got it. Yeah, I'll give you that. So moving on from that one to San Diego Comic Con from 1978. Another Boris cover, guys, man. Uh, and here he put, yep, another incredible Boris cover for good measure. Uh, better in some ways than the above one, the one above, which is previous to this one. Uh, but lesser uh, in that, and it isn't painted. Still beautiful. Uh, sexy and not too too rare. Uh, thirty dollars should get you a decent copy of this one here, man, from San Diego. Uh, nineteen seventy eight copy there. Uh, I, I mean, I, I enjoy. It. I, you know what it is? I, it's just something about not even the, the the art, more like the background, the the color pops, I guess, and brings I don't out. Know. I, dude, art. I I think you couldn't have picked two worse colors to combine together. Well, purple and uh, and green. It's not even black, right? It's not even black. Yeah, is it green? Or maybe it's just black that's faded. Could be black that's faded. Purple and green make blue, no? Or is it yellow and yellow and red? Purple and green make blue? <laughs> oh, man, yeah, yo. Shit. So, yeah, man. <laughs> we need, we need to get one of the color wheel. Uh, it's been a while since I went to elementary school, so yeah, sorry. 
Another cover done by <laughs> Boris, man. And this next one up is going to be Broski's favorite. No, bro, uh, Josh's favorite. This is a Gavet Perelli comic art convention from 1972, cover done by Enric uh, Torres Pratt, guys. Uh, and then here, my man Morello. Let's, uh, I read a couple of this. Yeah, this he wrote a few things on this one. He put often known as Gonzalez Art uh, since the contract for it had was his, so he was allowed to sign it. Uh, this piece was uh, partially graced. Partially graced uh, the cover of Emperor Liberation number 19 and 45 in reverse. I don't know what that means. And was used for posters in the 1970s. Is actually by Enric Torres Pratt. Uh, it is probably the most iconic image of Vampy. Yes, even more than the Frazetta that graces issue number one. And here is an amazing way to snag one for uh, the same year as initial use. This program shouldn't set you back much more than $20 to $25 as it is relatively common guys um so here we go man um yeah man the vampirella expert josh what do you think nope <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh i guess man um there's a pass yeah. for josh you know it's a, this different it's a, it's almost like a photo photo cop if you look at it at first it looks like someone took it's like one of those photo variants that they do on the Vampirella, so kind of get that aspect for a second because of the legs, but it's it's dope. It's dope. I like it. It's different. Uh, when I pick it up, not necessarily a good price. Nineteen seventy-two ain't my year, but yo, <laughs> I'm gonna issue a challenge to Morello right now. Nineteen seventy-two is not my year. Yeah, what's your I challenge? Said, I, my challenge is I want to see if he can do just one, not even both, one of these lists a week that does not have. Vampirella or anything that dynamite. Oh, Sanja. Sanja. Tell him, tell him. I'm yeah, Red Sanja. Sonia, any of that stuff. <laughs> like, one list. I love it, bro. I love it. <laughs> I'm trying to think back. I think he's done. He's done one list. No, that's only because it's like, you know, hot covers of the week or whatever. Yeah, like a joke. Yeah, we, did, we did Master, oh, was it Master Kung Fu, right? Oh, wait. We did that. But all right, we're moving on, man. Moving on here, and we're going on to Dragon Carnage uh, tw from twenty um, two thousand seven. Uh, artist is uh, Joseph Michael Linsner, uh, and here he puts on um, Joseph Joseph Michael Linsner doing a fantastic Dawn cover as always, and one you can you can't get on anything else. Uh, this one is ra rather rare and isn't even listed in um, uh, what is it MCS. And then, but Linsner fans like me have um have have to have this. Ten dollars will get you one. Uh, I guess you know for ten dollars will get you a nice little co little copy there. And uh, I was about to say that 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 doesn't look censored, right? Oh my bugger! Mm, take old buddies. <laughs> Yo, thinking, uh, I like this cover. This room, this kind of reminds me of um like Dungeons and Dragons stuff from the from like the eighties. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like from the eighties, maybe the very early nineties. Um. So I like it. I which one that one? A good cover. A lot of colors. A lot of um, cause like I, I just like the way the colors are on it. You got that purple that pops, and then you got the background. So it's different. I'm with, I'm with you on both, man. I like the color play on this one, definitely, man. Uh, and the woman right there definitely looks looks sexy. Yo, definitely freaking had some implants way before her time. I'll tell you that. <laughs> and maybe, maybe she pregnant. She got milk. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. know. Man. I don't know about that. <laughs> no, those, those look those look fake to me. Oh shit! <laughs> All right, so we move on to the last one, and this one's going to be Dragon Con from 2013, guys. Yeah. Covered by Unknown. Uh, here we put down um, Morello. Put down while we are on the subject of Dragon Con. Here is another exquisite cover, uh, a la Heavy Metal Mag cover. Uh, incredible art and gorgeous presentation. This one can be had really cheap for about ten dollars, guys. Ten dollars. That looks like a picture. It does, right? Like, really kind well, of, obviously not the dragon, but like you know, the no, girl the, looks like a yeah, picture. Yeah, it, it does. Um, I, but I, it's not. I don't think it's not. It is a picture. I, I, I like this one though. I, I really like this one. Uh, just like the one before, man. Just really nice art there, man. Kind of gives know? me. Uh, I don't. I don't know if you guys would know who this is, but Boris Vallejo. Boris Vallejo. Yeah, he does a lot of art like this. Um, you know, he does a lot of fantasy. You know, Dungeons and Dragons type stuff. Not in Dungeons and Dragons, but like, you know, you'll see a lot of like calendars, like a lot of those type of like, you know, sexy freaking medieval women type calendars. It's usually, you know, his artwork. Mother yeah. of Dragon. 
You love dragons, you broski? Yeah. No, I'm not a big dragon fan, bro. No, fuck dragon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so those are our list, man. Uh, shout out to Mike Morello over there, CDSI guys. You already know, man. And this right here, definitely good. Check out um the Some article bitch. on CBSI, man. This is Cover Tunes issue number 170. It's 167, guys. Unconventional part two, guys. All right. So to make sure you check out part one, man. That's some different ones for part one, man. Over there, comicbookinvest.com. Um, all right. <laughs> all right. So what we talk about next, Broski? What we got? Well, we got uh we want to talk a little bit about Black Widow and our thoughts on it. If you guys seen it. Yes, man. Yes, man. Definitely, man. Listen, man. People in the chat, man. If y'all want to chime in too, y'all could chime in. You know what I mean. But before I do that, man, let me just yeah, put this spoilers. Thing. Yes, yes, man. You know, you know, just so you know, man. If you're not into hearing spoilers, you know, just you know, mute it until you see that disappear. Once you see but that, you disappear. only chime in if you agree with me. Uh, only if you agree with Josh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, man. Broski, uh, with uh, we, you know, and, and both and Josh. Uh, so yeah, man. We, I, I know. Um, we, I was talking to what is it, Thoro yesterday on uh, auction, and uh, you was there, Josh, and and Biggs, and then we're kind of giving shit about Black Widow, but I, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was Dude, a fun. So story. did I. And here's the thing. I was gonna say something to Thoro because on 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 the chop up, he said he liked it, like for the most part. I so see. like, I don't know if he was joking. I, I don't know, but so he's forgetting what he was saying. There, I'm assuming, right? Uh, that's what you say. Uh, hey, listen, man, yo, Thoro, I, I didn't see the chop up, uh, but yeah, yesterday you did say that it was it was kind of doo doo. Uh, like the, the way he said that at the end, I kind of took that as a joke. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I don't know either, man. But I did enjoy it. Uh, I did see the post credit scene. Um, it was it was nice, man. It was nice. The action was freaking dope. I enjoyed the characters. I did enjoy the Red Guardian. I tell you, I I, I enjoyed him. So did I? Yeah, I enjoyed the sister. You know what I mean? Uh, the whole play with the red room and everything was was dope. You know, um, I mean, listen, man, it it wasn't freaking the best movie ever. No, by far no. Uh, but it was fun. It, it was enjoyable. Family, family. Yeah, that's it. It's all about family. <laughs> Broski, what you thought of it, man? What you thought of it? Uh, you know, what? I like, I like. I'm, I'm with you with the, the action sequences right there. Me and my dad watched it yesterday. Um, I think the fact when he had it, they had the area where they were like on beat back up. It was too prolonged. It's like, okay, you got 20 minutes. You're just fucking talking and talking and talking. I think they could have cut off some of that time because that time that that was one that was like there was a big old pause in the middle of everything, talking about their life and everything, all that all that shit that was going on. Um, you know, I think they played good characters. They, you know, Scarlett, of course, Black Widow, her sister played an awesome character. I like the fact that when she was joking around about her pose, her posing and shit, and kind of like telling her what is that shit. And I was like, I, me and my pops laughed at that. She she did do that a lot. Her little little sideways, po- her little pose in the ground. Um, I, I I like the fact that 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 you know you had the 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 family, but it wasn't really a family. But it, 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 the way that they were doing things, and they were both like kind of like set up to be brothers, sisters. So it was it was a, it was a good movie. It was a good. But I think I think I've heard it from somebody I can't remember where, but the time of the movie. The timing was way off. I think that was they should have done this. They should have put this movie out a long time ago. I know the situation with COVID. It, it, the reason why they prolonged because theaters weren't opening. But I would have probably taken a loss and put that movie in the time era that was meant for me because by prolonging it, everybody already watched the Avenger movies, and the fact of having it in the middle of that shit, it was kind of not confusing, but it was kind of like okay, we already know she, you know, her situation. And we're on to the next chapter of the MCU, and this is like taking us a few chapters back of the of what's going on in the in in the MCU universe of the, the what they're putting that movie. So it, that's the only thing I could say that that by by prolonging it, it did it did take kind of like kind of like a setback where you ha- I had to like explain my dad and me and my dad were talking while the movie was going on what was going on because he was a little confused of the time frame. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's about it. Right, yeah, Josh, what you think? I really liked it. Um, I, 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 you know, there's a couple issues that I had with it, but you know, they're not major issues. I thought, um, 
I think that this uh, would have served better as a show. Uh, I've said this, I think, on the chop up. Um, I would have liked if they had, you know, lengthened it just a little bit. Um, you know, maybe made it like a three episode show. I thought, it, I think it would have played better. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I thought uh, at the at, towards the end there, were, there was a little bit of a pacing issue. I, you know, I don't mind the parts where they're explaining things. Like, I, like I don't need a one hundred percent action movie the whole time. Like, I would rather things make logical sense than just cool shit happening. You know, um, or not, not. I don't mean when I say logical sense. I don't mean. I mean obviously a lot of things that happen in these movies are illogical that could never happen, but mm -hmm. logical sense within that world. Yeah. yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, I thought it, there was. I thought you know after they leave the uh, the farmhouse and and go up to the red room, you know I felt like it was pr the pacing was pretty good, and then it just was like. <laughs> Like okay, just like it just it went too quick uh, for me. It was kind of a little bit rushed. Um, you know, the, I I I think I don't want to say a lot. I would say a, a good portion of people have a problem with the whole Taskmaster um, thing. Don't, don't know why. It should have. Yeah, yeah, like they didn't bother me. Like, like is Taskmaster me. like really that big of a character where it's like if we don't do justice to the real Taskmaster, like. People are going to be like really angry, and you know, I'm sure there are true Taskmaster fans out there, and he is a dope How character, there? or, or a very sometimes can be a good character in the comics. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, if, if you kind of remove that out of there, like this isn't the same Taskmaster, I thought it was kind of cool, you know. <laughs> I agree. My, my, my dad said the Winter Soldier's back. <laughs> You know, I mean, it, it's so weird, though. It, but the the weird thing is, is, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but it's so obvious that it's a guy in the suit when the mask is on. Yeah. You know, like it's so freaking obvious. Um, oh, yeah. But like, double. you know, a lot of the fight scene, not a lot of them, but like a good majority of the fight scenes were really well. I think like the yeah. sickest thing was either the fight on the bridge it's with so Taskmaster, good. like in the beginning, or... Mm -hmm. The one scene where Yelena and y to me, Yelena made this movie um, when she when she comes down out of the ceiling in the red room and she does that pose and she says what disgusting or whatever she says. Yeah. And she comes around that corner on that guard and like spins around his head and like leg sweeps him at the same time. Yeah. 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 That was fucking dope. No, oh, I dope. wish you would do that on me. Yeah. I like, I like the car. Yeah. <laughs> And the car action scene was dope too when they when they're in the car chasing and she fucking just the, the motorcyclist was coming and she opened that fucking door and just kicked it because it was chasing yeah. that was dope and then the subway situation that was, that was, that was crazy that my dad looked at me like what the fuck when, when we went straight down to the subway and everybody's like what the fuck's going on I mean listen man I, I one scene that I did enjoy and it, it is like almost impossible for it to happen in real life you know what I mean was the fight when the we were when they were falling in front of the red room you know what I mean? Uh, and oh, the, yeah. the, fighting, the whole fighting scene between Taskmaster and Black Widow, uh, it, it was. I enjoyed that part. I thought that that part was was dope. You know? Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Mentioned a few um, other parts that I that I enjoyed too. Uh, but this film was very fun to watch. I mean, yeah, it was. I, I, it. I, I mean, should, it shouldn't have been held this long, though. You know what I mean? That's yeah. the only thing. You That's know the what only thing. Mean, it's whatever. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it would have done any better or any worse. You know, no, people are I still, think. you know, you know, now we're at a point, you know, with these shows where it's we're expecting or a lot of people are expecting things like in quick succession, you know. So in some ways, I almost think this movie was maybe better served being held, you know. Um, I don't know. I mean, we'll never know. Uh, I mean, you listen, man. Like I said, it's spoilers, man. If you haven't seen um, Yelena, we know we, it's not the last we've seen her. We're gonna see her in, in that Hawk, Hawkeye thing. Uh, if you seen the yeah. post credit scene, yeah. Uh, so, and, and it's it's so it's it's good, man, because that character was a it was a good character for this movie. Uh, you know, um, I thought everybody had their good moments. Uh, uh, Natasha, Yelena, the Red Guardian. Right, Red Guardian to me was one of my favorite ones. Of the movie um, i didn't like i didn't like rachel weiss's character though yeah i, I know yeah you know, like her, her accent is just not good it, it, you know it, i like her in some things but um 
You know what? I shouldn't say that. I I I liked her once she was up in the red room, but when she was down like in the farm and at the beginning, but when she was at the farm, there was I don't know, there was just something off. It was a good movie. Yeah, it was, man. Uh, yeah, no, I, think, I, think, I think Biggie's hit around the dump. It is a, it kind of sets it up. So I think she's not going to work because it is like an origin story of Elena. And um, I don't think that he see put you guys think Elena's first appearance will go down. I don't think so. I think no, that absolutely not. Yeah, go no, up. Go no, up. Especially this, yeah. with the post credit scene. Yeah, for sure. And and you know what? That's another reason why I think this movie might be better served now. Uh, coming out now because this isn't so much a story about Natasha as it is about Yelena. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's about them both, obviously, but this is about Yelena going forward, not yes. Natasha going forward. And we're closer to Yelena's well, during the, the mantle. Yeah, you know, so it makes sense. It makes I mean, sense. this all took place after Civil War, right? Between Civil War and what was the other one, Josh? I forgot. Uh, Endgame, I think. Uh, Infinity War. In Infinity yeah. War. There you go. Uh, so this took place around that time. So if people are not familiar with that, you know, uh, uh, yeah. So the, yeah, yeah, get to know that man. And this movie was good. Uh, he says Biggs. This movie was good, but still one, one and done for me. Um, mm. I'll rewatch it. I'm not gonna I'll, lie. I'll rewatch yeah. it. Like I like I'm not gonna go back and purposely rewatch it. But like if it was on TV, oh, yeah. I'd watch it. You know, I'll watch it again. Yeah. You know, if you go to Disney Plus, they're done lying. It's like, oh, you want to throw it on? I'll just throw it on the background. No, this is coming from a guy who, who you know, who's like, you know, Godzilla and Dragon Ball Z. You know, <laughs> yo, I'm not even kidding you. After I, I like that stuff. Yo, after I watched this movie, I was going through in my head, and this is how freaking crazy I am. I'm like, well, I don't know what show I'm going to be on, but I'm going to go through, and before everyone gives their opinion, I'm going to give what Biggs thinks. I'm going to give what Gomez thinks. I'm going to give what Joker thinks. I'm going to give what <laughs> James thinks. You, you know? crazy motherfucker, man. And, and, and I got every – well, I don't know what James thinks yet, but, like, uh, I, I basically got them all right so far with the exception of Biggs. I, I thought Biggs – this is, I thought Biggs would be like – it was okay. Like it, it, it was it, like there was parts I liked about it, but not really. But he liked it, so or that's what I remember him saying. He liked it. You know, obviously there's some things he I didn't. Can, like I kind of remember from the auction too. Him, him and Thorough were both kind of like saying there was kind of doo doo. Uh, oh, Biggs, you said that too. I think he did. I think he did. Uh, but man, I like, give it one eight out of ten. You know what? I, I was talking to the wife. I, like around seven, seven out of ten. It was enjoyable. Like I said, it was fun. I'll give it eight out of ten. I, I thought yeah, I'd give a it eight. Movie. Yeah, that was a real good movie. Yeah. Yeah, man. So good one there, Terry. Like that one there, man. Uh, then my man, my man said uh, over here, Melina Rachel uh, was needed a push to the family theme. Original Widow, four times Red Room. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, Thunderbolt's definitely coming. With, yeah, we got to see uh, General Ross again. So, yeah, man, I feel like Thunderbolts is bound to happen, man. They give you a glimpse of uh, Baron Zemo and Winter, and Winter Soldier, a uh, fucking Winter Soldier, and then um, you got to see, uh, you know, some more. Oh, you would put Taskmaster. Well, it's, you yeah. would think it's definitely got to happen now. I mean, yeah. they, they're setting it up at, at the end of, like, you know, they set it up at the end of Falcon and Winter Soldier with, with, uh, with uh, what's her name coming in at the end and, and speaking with, uh, I almost said John Carter. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, John John Carter, Warlord from Mars, is coming. Um, uh, U.S. agent there. What's his name? Uh, oh my fucking god! What's his name? Ah, who cares, man? Don't matter. But we know who you're talking about. You know, he's a U.S. agent. Uh, kid collector right there says eight out of eight point five out of ten. Uh, will be a nine, but it's like Taskmaster. I, I, I enjoy Taskmaster, man. I enjoyed it. Yeah, the storyline made sense yeah. with this, with the Black Widow. John yeah. Walker, thank you, kid. John Walker. Yeah. There you go. So yeah, man. That, that's uh, and, that's and, you know Contessa Valentina de Allegra Font or whatever the Allegra de Fontaine or whatever fucking name. Is. <laughs> Super chat. You know, real quick, <laughs> my, my my man Big said I didn't say it was doo doo. I said I enjoyed it. It was done well. Uh, just didn't like Taskmaster Origin, but it worked for the story. They were telling. They were telling. I mean, yeah. So, so that I mean, it worked. So that means. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it, was great, but it was good. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I appreciate that, Biggs, with the final super chat, man. 
All right, so uh, let me just take this shit off right here. Bam. That's it. I, that's how I was our review for Black Widow, man. Uh, again, man, I, I, really, I really, like I said, I enjoyed it. it was, it was yeah, fun, I was man. disappointed. I, I, yo, by the way, I, I saw The Quiet Place, man. The Quiet Place 2 uh, with um with my wife last night, man. And yeah, that shit was good. That shit was, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed uh, The Quiet Place 2. Uh, it's just you know, I like the little take. I'm gonna just you know talk about it a little bit about it real quick. Uh, Krasinski, my man John Krasinski, they showed a little part of him in the beginning, even though we know he he died in part one and shit, you know. Uh, but all this place, the story, it was pretty good, man. It was pretty good. I enjoyed it, man. I recommend watching the Quiet Place too. Uh, so we're gonna move on from there, man, and then talk about. We're gonna talk about uh, CGC grinding, you know, grinding some video games, bro. Which I think it is, man. Uh, you know, I know Broski's. Uh, you you play video video games, but you don't. You're not active like uh like like Josh. And, no, uh, not that much anymore. Like I used to be. Yeah. So Josh, what do you think about CGC grain of video games, bro? I mean, I think it's logical for them to jump into that. Uh, I think they are trying to get as much of the of the pie as they can. Um, I think. I've heard it so many times now that, oh, this is going to make turnaround times even longer, but uh, I highly doubt it considering the fact that, you know, they're hiring for video game graders. I I don't think it's, I'm not saying it can't be done, but I'm not, I'm sure they're not just going to pull comic graders or card graders off of that to do video games. I mean, I don't know what it takes to grade a video game. I can't imagine it's that freaking hard. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'm wrong though. Um but the other thing is too is I don't know when this starts. So did they say when this starts? They didn't I'm read the sure, article I'm itself. Sure, yeah, I'm sure it probably won't be for a minute. I mean, I think it's just their intention. And I guarantee, you know, I, I guarantee the next thing is gonna be is gonna be toys for them. It's gonna be like action figures and stuff. I guarantee you that's right around the corner. One hundred percent. So get ready for that. I mean, really that's, go ahead. No, I no, 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 I want you to finish making your point. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think the thing that people need that should they should have the biggest gripe about uh, with CGC wait times is is the signature is the signings down there. Yeah. Yes, that, that's the biggest gripe that I have is the just this barrage of signings that they announce like four signings every week, like the, that that is what's slowing down times. And, uh, you know, I'll probably get myself in trouble here again by saying it by so many people sending in books that are not shouldn't be graded. Like, talk about you know, it. That's because I, I agree with you, Josh. I agree. Like, don't send a book that came out like like last week and, and like buy like 10 of them and then send a CG. Like, come on, man. Like, let, let's be reasonable, man. You know, say there's plenty of people. You, you grade what you want. I understand. You know what I mean, but you know at the same time, be be smart about what you what you grade now, especially yeah. now that with the time with the time turnaround the, the, the turnaround time I should say going on now, man. You just be careful what you send into grade. That's it. That's all I gotta say. Like you know, I, I've seen so many channels, and again, it's fine. Like I, I don't I don't begrudge anyone for slabbing whatever they want to slab when it comes to. You know, hey, I'm trying to collect this run for myself or whatever. That's whatever. I get that. I understand that. I I have, you know, a handful of books that mean nothing to, you know, the majority of the world. I get it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like you said, taking, uh, well, Thor 9 just came out this week and it's not even a key, but I'm going to get 10 of them slabbed and I'm going to send that down, you know, with the whole King and Black run, uh, 80 copies of each one. And I'm going to, my plan is to sell them all. Like, no, like not every book is a gradable book in my opinion and it, you know it's not just about because i got yelled at this for this on the chop up a couple weeks ago by a couple people like it's about the people think well you know not all of us can afford you know asm you know below 10 at however many thousands of dollars yeah i get that but that's not what i'm saying either everyone knows a book that is worth getting slapped for the most part for the most part obviously like i said Certain things mean certain certain books mean certain things to people. I get that, but for the most part, we know what books probably shouldn't be slabbed and is just clogging up the system. Yeah, oh, my man says flippers are cluttering the way. I mean, listen, I mean, you do what you want with your books. Yeah, like, you know what I mean. 
not a slabable book. Yeah. You know? I mean, only if it's like a key, like like son son kills the children number one, that's understandable. It, and and I'll tell I'll say it again. I think what they need to do, and they won't because they'll get so much backlash from retailers, is I think they need to I think they need to put some sort of a cutoff on on time for you know multiple a couple reasons, which is like, yo, we're not creating anything that's that's newer than two years old. We're not doing it. You know, they can make all the excuses they want for like, oh, well, we need to check and see if, you know, this is really the first appearance or if it's the next issue kind of thing. And, you know, we don't want to put the, you know, uh, something on the label and be wrong, but also it'll help cut down on the wait times. And I guarantee it'll help cut down on, you know, the, uh, you know, a good amount of junk being sent in. And I'll say it again, junk. <laughs> yeah, listen, it's true. Uh, comments are great saying too. either books one or two years old, younger shouldn't be graded. Uh, or modern books below a certain value. Until you listen, man, great whatever. Just be smart about what you send in. That's all I'm saying. Be smart. You know? Yeah, no, I, 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 sorry, Gomez. One more thing. I, I wouldn't say I agree with what he said. I don't know if I would do the value thing because again, like you could have a dollar book means so much to somebody for yeah. some personal reason. So like, I, I wouldn't really go by by that. But I think everyone knows what I'm talking about. Like, there's no reason to get. You know, every week or every time Thor comes out or, or Venom comes out, like, you know, everyone, I saw so many people slabbing like every Venom book. Like, if it was a key, I could even somewhat understand that one. But like, slabbing like, you know, eight copies of Venom 34, which is like maybe the second worst Venom book in the whole freaking run, you know? Yeah, real quick, comics on the edge is saying, Joker, what do you uh, what do y'all think about them limiting the number of amounts of the same books? Like you're only able to grade three of the same books. And if they do something like that, that might yeah, no, no, no. but I think um, I think it goes back to the signing. I think the signing is pushing a lot of people's orders part of back it. back in. That's one I think that's one of the major parts besides people doing a lot of big orders. But I think they have to deal with not doing any signings for a minute and get this shit situated before they jump back. <laughs> a lot of the is the pricing. Pricing really? is going to go up. So we'll see if anybody's going to be slabbing as much books as they have in the past because of the price point. So, uh, uh, My man, uh, Villain Issue says, uh, explain this. Explain to me why CG shouldn't grade my straight dogs number one, Josh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I'm not saying that that isn't a gradable book especially right now but what i'm saying is sometimes you know if you were to make a rule it doesn't 100 percent satisfy everybody you know most new obviously i've sent in brand new books to get slab before but you know it, what would you rather have would you rather to be able to maybe them do something to cut to drastically cut down on these times and maybe you have to sacrifice a book here or there that you want graded, I would trade that all day long to cut down on wait times. You know, you'll eventually be able to grade, get it graded. Um, real quick, my man, uh, Wilbur says, cut off. Nope, CGC's job is to, t to, to sell tickets, I guess, to the show. Uh, they don't care if the show is overcrowded and the wait. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, uh, who, the bathroom is way too long. Yeah, who, 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 somebody was asking me the other day. I forget who, if, like, if, if I could ever see CGC – uh, doing like what PSA did and just saying no, we're not taking any new orders. I'm like, absolutely not. Yeah, I, do, I, it would shock the shit out of me if they ever said we're not taking any new orders. And I, I could never. That shouldn't happen. Yeah, never. That happen. Uh, real quick, Peter Porker says, uh, who was able to get a copy number of, of White? Uh, really limited book. Definitely, man. It was limited. I did not get my copy. I wish I did. I got one copy. <laughs> you know what I mean, I mean, I got. I can't complain because I got. That's one more than a lot of people did. But we had. This this crew had quite a few ordered. Shit, basically. Yeah, Big says uh, you can't put a hold on the books, can be graded. Uh, that will backfire on them. Uh, people just need to be selective on what they submit. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Be selective, especially now with the turnaround time. Now be very selective of what you sent in, what you want to send them to. You know what I mean? Uh but at the same time, if you got fuck you money, then send it where the fuck you want. You know what I mean? Uh, Gray said, or if they're going to be signing, uh, then add the, those books to the bottom of the grading pile, uh, not the top. I don't know. I think they have, need to have a, execute a better plan with those. Like, if you have, like, 
a, 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 a signature series team, then have a signature series team plus graders for that. Or you're gonna have just. I think, uh, they, I think they do. They do. Okay, so then, and if they do, then they just need to be uh, a little bit more uh, uh, on top of that because I, I don't know. It's affecting the regular I mean, labels. I, I but, think the thing is too, is obviously um, most people aren't. I'm about to burp here in a second. Uh, that's right. They pay the customers always right. Customers <laughs> always right. So, right about that. Um, I, I think if people would be a little bit more immutable to the. Um, wait times if we understood how it actually went because there's like no rhyme or reason to any of it you know like i'll have orders that i send in in the same tier get done before the ones that i sent in first or like you know signature series which you know supposedly takes longer not that was down there that was at another show that should take longer get back you know like lickety split and i, I wish there was just some sort of I don't even know what that thing would be like. Just some, yeah, I don't. some consistency. And like when, like I've called them and asked them, like, uh, I sent in this order on December 9th and it was done in three weeks, in the same tier that I sent in something in September, and this isn't even moved into schedule to be graded yet. Can you explain yeah. that to me? Yeah, oh, true. No, well, you just got lucky. Uh, okay, well. It's true. It's true, man. Real quick, man. Uh, Raider Roy is saying cut down the cut down on times. Uh, then they need to stop having signings. That they're never gonna stop that. That right there was a big thing for them during COVID. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, Com Straight Dogs number one and Nottingham number one are obviously the exceptions. Uh, but not books like Noctera, Radiant Black, Spawn Universe. I disagree because you never know what's gonna happen with Noctera. You never know what's gonna happen with these other books. Uh, so it's a pick and choose. You know whether you like it or not, or whether you think these books have legs to be anything, you know what I mean? So it's just one of those guessing games, you know what the, I mean? The, see, the other, the other problem is this is while I agree, like everyone, you know, with everyone about CGC needs to figure out a way to cut these times down. Uh, we are just as much to blame, if not more than CGC for these times. I mean, j just as much. I mean, in reality, when everybody literally and their mother wants to send every book they have to them, uh, you know, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, it, it's not, trust me, I, I'm a human resource director. It's not that easy to just go out and find, you know, people to grade books. I mean, that's a very selective trade, which they then have to train all these people. Yes. Yep. You know? Yeah. Uh, so... Uh what business stays in business cutting down their customers base customer base mm. uh just be <clears> smart <throat> when sending books to for granted that's what i'm saying yeah just be be very selective of what you want to send because right now times is real bad i like, backed up you know what i mean uh exactly people are going to do what they want anyways yeah exactly and blc says it's not our fault if the green company didn't improve their company when they got a big rush update your business i guess he meant to say i don't agree with that no nah, i don't i don't <laughs> i don't agree with that not at all i mean uh, i mean look it happens I, I mean you could say the same thing about then like erod or me like or literally any other presser on the planet right now it's like it just all came at once and some of us either had to shut down or delay things or whatever there, Sometimes it's just unavoidable. Yeah, it's true, man. It's true. Ray Ross said all new signings take uh, uh, precedence over the submitted books, man. And he put hashtag stop signings. <laughs> Ray Roy. Uh, and, and they put villain issue says uh, the signing CGC is making more money. Therefore, they are more priority. This That's the thing. That's what I'm saying. Villains uh, issues. Uh, that, that This it isn't hard to figure out. Yeah. That's the thing, man. You know, and it's, it's a damn shame when I don't want my book signed. I just want my book graded. You know what I mean? So, yeah. uh, Terry JS says CBCS is, has been slow too, and they have zero signings. Uh, listen, man, CBCS, believe it or not, they've been getting multiple business. They've been, they've been getting business like crazy too, you know? Uh, so yeah, of course, they're going to be slow too, but I don't think it's going to be a waiting time of six months with CBCS. I'll tell you that. You know what I mean? Uh, I disagree uh, with that. I've been waiting a pretty long time for CBCS. I mean, we'll but, CB, but CBCS is also different in the way of, I mean, I'm sure they've gotten more orders for sure, but 
They've they've been not, they've yeah, been getting more orders. You should say. I don't think they have that many graders, like at all. Probably not. Probably like, not. maybe maybe that's the issue. Yeah. I mean, I could be wrong about that. I don't know as much about CBCS as I do about CGC, but like CGC, to my knowledge, has like tons more graders than uh and see that's what i think they should get that's what i think they should get rid of is those is that pre-screen i haven't seen have people been sending in for pre-screen because i haven't seen anybody i, I mean i don't know uh they don't send me a crack case y'all <laughs> listen the case like yeah you know uh wilbur says only way cgc will do a raise prices they'll change double uh they'll charge double and be happy with 50 percent of the submissions okay uh, Wait, what was it? what did that say uh only way cgc will do it do only way cgc will do is raise prices they'll just charge double and be happy with 50 percent of the submissions sure <laughs> and you know what the thing is as much as people like some people want to say like like how many people said oh they're gonna they, well, th th this price increase it's gonna kill them everyone's gonna jump shit dude i've said it so many times for cgc to fail at this point either one of only a couple things is going to happen will happen to have that happen they're going to have to do something so unbelievably egregious like you know something to the extent of like what pgx got caught out doing and i and honestly i don't even know if that would slow it down it really i think the only thing that can slow them down at this point is is if like uh Marvel stopped doing movies because I, I a big Same. part of it that's what's driving all of this is yeah. once once there's no more like MCU that's tough this comes all way down yeah that's what's driving everything right <clears throat> yeah, and then I'm gonna keep on going with this comments are great saying uh the true collector knows which ones to send in while the flippers are you know what I disagree because sometimes it's not even flippers sometimes it's people who just sending whatever you know what I mean uh, so uh, you know, but that's partially right there. You know, I agree with you about that, partially. Uh, Tito73 says, uh, you know how CGC will improve if they stop taking all the BLC's books? <laughs> Just joking, BLC. Well, Tito73, you have a point there. You have a point there. <laughs> Shit. Terry Jesse J say, I submitted two books back in April and still in processing. Yo, bro, me too, Terry. Me too. Uh, Raider Ross says, CBCS is missing out on the opportunity here. Yeah, you, you know, uh... Like, what do you think would, would, would do it, Raider Roar? I want to hear that. I, I, I See, I don't know, though, if they are missing out on it. Because you don't know what their financial situation is. And maybe, they're, maybe their financial situation is really good right now where, um, you know, they're at a point where their profit margin is so much bigger because – they don't have to buy maybe as much raw materials for plastic and boxes, you know, corrugated and all that kind of stuff. So maybe they're good at the sweet spot they're in. You know, we don't know that um, because just remember more, more orders doesn't necessarily translate to more money. It obviously can, mm -hmm. but it doesn't always mean that necessarily. Because then you got to hire more employees. Your your benefits go up. Your workman's comp goes up. You have to get new buildings. Your bill, your taxes on your buildings go up. There's That's so many things business, in yeah. yeah. There's so many things in play. Uh, so yeah, real quick, uh, we're gonna move on. Big saying CBCS only has eight graders at the moment. Okay, that's, that's what I that's what I thought, and I yeah. think CBC or CGC has like three hundred. Imagine, <laughs> just imagine the, the the amount of money that goes out in salary benefit and, packages you know uh, bonuses which is part of that workman's comp all overhead related to employees training yeah unemployed uh, you know all your fight attacks all that kind of stuff and then uh, my man wilbur says uh my understanding of cbcs is one tough the size of cgc i agree uh yes uh blc saying never gonna happen that's the problem blc <laughs> keep sending your action comics seven seven twenty seven or whatever the hell you said it you know what I mean? uh radio exactly bigs we need to step up your game and higher yes yes man uh at this point uh disney won't end the mcu because of the huge money made of course yeah you know what i mean yeah right uh like uh looks like the mcu is here for at least another 10 years uh maybe more, more, than, more than that yeah cbcs change uh 
your label uh, win the game. Okay, that's what you mean. Change the label and win the game. I got you. All right. Yo, what is going on, my man Steve from Hip Hop Cinema and uh, from Team Nerd? Her shout out to those guys at 10 p.m. Eastern, Hello. guys. Go tune into their channel, man, because they got uh, a show, live show tonight, man. Uh, Villain Issue says, do we think the new CDC owners are going to cut scum corners and maximize profits? I don't know, bro. Honestly yeah. speaking, depends. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, it's an inv- it's an investment, you know, firm. I I would think from the um, <laughs> you know, from the corporate the level at no, well, at, when I say the corporate level, I mean the corporate level in Sarasota. I don't think you'll see much change. The only thing I think you'll see is them just expanding into new territory you know like with video games or with toys yeah. or with anything i mean that's what but go, but going back to that though josh real quick that it cut you off right there like you know cgc right now is known for being the number one and green comics right you know what i mean and v- right now video games number one is like gotta be water water like you know what i'm saying water is like the number one are, are now cgc trying to step on their toes are they going to be the cbcs <laughs> of Braden video games, you know what I'm saying? Are they going to be number two? You know what I mean? Uh, are they going to be the second? You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, with Braden comics, everybody get all oh, CBCS out, oh, this is that, whatever, whatever. CGC is number one because they've been around from first or whatever the case doing that. Uh, but yeah, man, to me, I think Watt has been the number one grading company for video games has been, right? Uh, and, and now I guess CGC is trying to step on their toes. Uh, and, and what's up? Go ahead. I think they, uh, they will obviously be number two for a while, but, you know, that uh i appeal means so much to so many people and Mm -hmm. cgc definitely knows what they're doing when it comes to making their product look better uh i'm not necessarily saying it is better i don't i think cbcs cases are better oh going back to books yeah yeah yeah. yeah, but i'll get back to video games in a second here uh, you know, I think CBCS inner wells are much better. Okay. Um, but that label, there's just something right about that label. And then when you look at like CGC cards, I've seen a couple in person. They look better than PSA. And I've seen video g- game, you know, uh, that have been graded. If they come up with a, la- unfor- as stupid as it sounds, a piece of paper can drive so much. It's crazy. Yeah, you know, I, even though you, I don't know, still, I feel like the top of grading company when it comes to cars is going to be uh, PSA Beckett. You know what I mean? Uh, for now. For, yeah, for now. Uh, but I don't know. When it comes to video games, Water has a nice label too. Water, Water they, they, they have a nice clear label at that. You know, I think everybody enjoys it and I enjoy it, you know. Uh, you know, but I mean, to each his own, I guess, right? Sure. Uh, so let me see over here. Wilbur's going down here. CBC says should be uh, should have changed the name to Beckett and changed the label. You know, I, I you know I don't know if they should have changed the name to Beckett, but definitely change the label. You know what I mean? Yo yo, what's going on? I agree. Universe X is going on, man. He put down there. Yo, watch tomorrow war. It was alright. Yo, it was dope. It was dope, kid. Yeah, I agree, man. I agree. Josh, it gives more the more cat. Uh, what? Cap- it wasn't too expand. Capitals to expand. Got you, got you. All right. Uh, my man Steve says, uh, much love to East West and uh, New York Warriors squad. Yeah, you already know. You're all right. All right so we got here, man. It's going to be shoot, shoot, shoot. Uh, Heritage owns water. Uh, so it will be a tough nut to crack. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, Wilbur. You know what I mean? So uh, it's, not a, it's not a walk in the park when it comes to water, when it comes to the video game. See, it's uh, just water. CGC is the only given 9.6s at the moment. They said uh, after August, they'll be resumed to 9.8s. <laughs> uh, if this issue says, hear me out, though, spend the average of 20% less time per book rate. More books um, make more profit. You Wait, know? put that back up. Say, say that again. He says, uh, hear me out, though. Spend an average of 20% less time per book. Grade more books. Make more profit. They, uh, is- so, are you saying they should do that, or you're saying that's what you think they're doing? I'm sure he'll answer you in the chat there. Uh, comments are great for video, grading video games. If another way to bring the money for CCG, since they're in so many grading arenas, money, coins, cards, comics, posters, and now VG cartridges. Yes, yes, Ben. But uh, it's just, you know, I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know. No. 
Uh, see, Universe X says that it shouldn't be able about it shouldn't be about the label. It should be about the book inside the case, which is true. But sometimes you know people like to see that it's the eye appeal, I guess, for certain people. You know what I mean? So yeah, but again, like I compare it to like a car. It's like, look, if you spent the money and got a Mercedes, are you gonna roll around there with Chevy or Walmart rims or hubcaps on it? No, you're not. Yeah, the rims isn't the isn't the biggest thing, but it adds to it. You know, it's the whole package. Yes. All right. Uh, Five dollars super chat from Biggs. Uh, it's a shame how people care about uh, more about the label than the accuracy of the grade. Shaking my, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. You know, but sometimes it's just like you get these collectors that are collecting one certain way, and they they're like OCD ish, so they got to collect it this way now. You know what I mean? Fuck so. You. <laughs> Uh, and, yeah, yo, b- listen, BLC is in that lane too. He he only collects CGC, and then, you know he doesn't really collect anything else like that. Uh, they, people are certain their ways, you know. What I mean? Uh, Dennis J. Nookie, CGC needs to go um where no one gets guys got yet, bro. It's stupid. Like greater watches, it could be the big, yeah. It could be big. Uh, I could personally give a fuck about the label. I've had yeah. less issues. Since switching to CBCS, but overall it's the same shit. You know what? Some dude is the same shit. You know what I mean? You yeah. know, uh, you know, you graded whichever you like. I, CBCS, CGC. You know, I like CBCS. You know, for you know certain things, CGC for other things. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. What's going on there? And then our villain issue says it's an investment firm. You said it yourself. To them, it isn't as much about accuracy or margins, in my opinion. Uh, I hope I'm wrong. Yeah, but uh, I mean that. Tra- but the thing is, is if you get Look, I've said this so many times now. Yo, all, when you have the amount of books that they're that they're that they're grading, no, we don't. Um, when you have the amount of books that they're grading, and you know, you look at these YouTube videos, and ninety nine percent of these YouTube videos are CGC unboxings as compared to CBCS unboxings. <laughs> Obviously, the errors are going to be more focused on them when the errors do happen because that's the majority of the of the books that people are showing. I guarantee you that like if you took like if you took the actual ratio between the two companies, I bet it's close because how many books does CGC actually get right that, you know, nobody gives them credit for you. I'm not saying the books that, that they don't mess up because they sure as shit do plenty of times, you know, but here's the thing. It's, it's, it's humans. It's always going to be a matter of opinion. Things are going to get missed. People are going to think different than the person sitting next to them. Now, mm-hmm. at 300 graders and maybe more, think about – the thing that scares me the most is it's it's not going to be so much the accuracy of the grading. It's going to be the consistency of the grading. I think you're going to start seeing blocks of, oh, they're grading a little bit harsher now. Oh, they're grading a little bit softer now because how the, the amount of employees that they're bringing into grade – when you have 300 employees, most of those employees don't stay there for a long period of time. It's easier to keep like eight people together at once and keep them there for a long time. And maybe one goes, okay, well, we can replace one and still kind of keep the consistency the same. When you've got 300 people, well, maybe like 10 of them, 15 of them leave all within a given two, three months. And then having to train those people, new people to come in and fill those shoes. And then the consistency may be down at table <clears throat> or block, however they have it set up, four goes down and or goes up or whatever the case is. So I don't know. You know I gotta yeah, tell you one thing. This 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 conversation right here is something that Josh, you know, is really passionate about. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, they always they always uh, uh point out the cons and the pros. It's gonna happen yeah. wherever work, anywhere. It's always going to happen, no matter how many workers you have. It's going to be those the cons that you're going to point out before the pros. So they're never going to thank somebody. They're always going to see the mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, uh, I'm, Craig, I'm not saying they don't make mistakes because they sure as shit do. Yeah. yeah. Plastic um, coffins must go. Hashtag combo liberation. There you go. You know what I mean? Man, uh, I, 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 I don't. I don't. I don't. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you right now, Universal X. I can tell you right baby. now who has, who has um, the most slabs between Josh and BLC. BLC. BLC, BLC hands, hands down. down. 
because <laughs> he grades anything, but, bro. But but if you talk about value towards the slabs, then that's a whole different that's Josh. story. That's yeah, Josh got the value. Yeah, uh, Josh is on fire right now. Definitely, Steve. He is, man. Uh, what's in the box? What box? Somebody has a box. I mean, I don't know. Uh, this question is a big question. Is a 9.8 CBCS is also as true as a C 9.8 CGC? Uh, you know what, man? At it what period depends. of time? Yeah, it all depends. It all depends because, you know, you might get a sleepy um, grader and then there's something slip. You know what I mean? I, either company never know. You know, you never know. You know, it's, um, it's tough. Uh, buy a blank. Buy that blank and rock stock. Buy that blank, rock stock. Okay. Black, black. <laughs> Buy Mystery. that black rock. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying now. Black, okay. <laughs> we got you, man. Uh, see, you started to come around to similar views. Uh, there you go, my man. Villain issues. And uh, they got Universe X in the saying. So you are saying it's not the best time to send books because they are fresh and don't know shit yet. I, I, I don't. I, yes, but I, I don't think there's going to be a time now where there is a good point to send in books. I think it's always going to be now because I think that I don't think we've seen anything when it comes to long wait times, not even close yet. I mean, con season is just starting to get going. Yeah. Like, yeah. Finally. Can you imagine once that happens? So, yeah. Like, honestly, it's unfortunate, but this is going to be our new reality. Like I've resigned myself to the fact, and I'm not saying it's right that I'm going to send in books and I'm going to be pleased with, you know, the majority of them. And there's going to be a couple that I disagree with and I'm going to resubmit them. And hopefully it turns out in my favor. It, it just kind of is the nature of the beast. Yeah. I mean, um, listen, man, you know, me and Josh sometimes, you know, like, you know, he, me and Josh has a difference. I have my differences, but this one right here, I kind of agree. You know, I agree with Josh on this one, man. Um, uh, he says, I don't have deep pockets like Josh. You know, like, uh, listen, man, listen, to submit as many slabs as you do, I don't know, BLC. I don't know. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, the accuracy uh, will fall victim to margins, my man. Villain Issue says, uh, comics are great. For people looking to make money in comics, grading is now an important part of the business, and people should care their passion about it. Yeah, you know what? All right, man. In fact, Uniex, uh, there was a stretch where you could uh, tell new graders was uh, grading way too hard. You know what? It depends. Now, now, that, now, now that I know that CGC has whatever uh, amount of graders and CBCS has only eight graders at the moment, it's like, damn, like, shit, man. All, out of those 300 graders, which one are the really good ones? Which one are the veteran ones? Which You know what I'm saying? It's 40%. Tough. You know what I mean? And let me see. Uh, Raider Raw says, "I see CGC raising prices again, going for." And you know what? That that that's gonna happen. Even with CBCS, eventually they will raise prices too. Man. So submit submit now. Uh, you know, it's just wait to get your book next year. You know what I mean? Uh, really, yeah. she says, "If you could go back in time, that would be the best time to send them." You know what? You're damn right. You're damn right. Uh, Era about to send. Uh, Universe X says, "Era about to send oh, some." Brother, you ain't getting them to like January guys. next year, brother. Night Trust me. God. Yeah, yeah, January 2022, we, brother. We finally caught up, man. But yeah, man, that's we just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, CGC uh, turnaround time and uh, video game grading and stuff like that, man. Uh, so yeah, uh, and, and by the way, man, you know, uh, talking about the next thing, man, Sons Killing the Children, Children, man, they got their writers for Netflix series, man. It's gonna be a series in Netflix. Uh, they got my man, what is it, Trevor Macy and Mike Flanagan, guys, man. Uh, the guys who did uh, what is it, Doctor? Uh, I forgot what it was. Uh, the sequel to uh, to The Shining. Was it? Uh, so, guys, now that Sons Killing the Children, what do you think about these books? This going, man. Uh, uh, is it time to 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 sell? No, nope, not yet. Not yet. I, nope. All right, there you go, guys. Uh, what do you think, Broski, about these two writers, man? For um, uh, no, it's 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 a, it's a great story. I read it. I read it. I think I haven't read the, the latest, the seventeen, but I did read the sixteen. A uh, great story. It got me hooked on it. Um, I didn't buy. Actually, I unfortunately missed the boat. I did get the full cover, but. I bought trades recently, and I read them, and a uh, really good story, a really good storyline. I hope they, they do justice with the storyline. It looks like, I don't know, is it going to be a live, or is it going to be like anime? It's live, right? No, it's going to be a live action, I think. If I'm yeah, saying. so it'll be, it'll be, a, it'll be a good. It'll be good. With, with the um the way technology is nowadays, it's, it's easy to get all the shit that is needed towards the story, So and, the, and hopefully they do justice with the storyline and put a little more depth in it, which they do at times. So yeah, no, um, I can't wait for it. It's gonna be a good story. 
Yeah. I'm all about the horror. Oh, what, do you, what do you think about this uh this this, this announcement, Josh, about Netflix getting the two writers for uh Sense Killing Children? Uh I think it's gonna make the price of those books go up even more. Uh like, last, time, huh? last time we checked last time we checked the nine eight was going for like what was it thirteen, fifteen hundred? The last one yeah. sold according to GPA sold for fifteen hundred for the <laughs> you know the true first print A cover. Yeah, uh, so can I ask you this? Do you th- I mean is it gonna reach is it gonna reach like more than two thousand by the time yeah. we get a trailer? Like twenty five hundred, yeah. you think yeah. so? Mm-hmm. Maybe sure. even more. Damn. I don't know. I, I, I yeah, maybe. <laughs> Joker, I don't know. I mean, it's a walking, dead, it's just a walking <laughs> dead situation. See, he, see, here's the thing that I don't know because obviously I was not into comics back then. But bef- what was a? And I understand it was a different time as well, but. What was Walking Dead in a nine eight worth? Before, At the time, about fifteen hundred. No, no, no. Before any announcement was ever made that it was even being made into a TV show, what was when that? It first came out or in time? Because because no, no. I remember it being like sixty. No, bucks. before before any announcement of Walking Dead. Yeah, about go. 60, 60 to eighty bucks because uh, people were liking that story before it got hot. So people were trying to find that issue number one. It, it, so was, it was so low to, printed too. It would, we got to remember yeah. too. Okay. It, it was 60 to 80 bucks for a while until they, so, they got the movie. So think about this. Obviously, Walking Dead show is just, you know, blew up into something bigger, way bigger yeah. than they ever dreamed it could be. But what, I mean, but something is killing the children, like, was a, over a thousand dollar book before kind of ending this stuff. Yeah. You know? Yo, but you gotta take the fat. You gotta take uh, uh, the time. It, the the time. No, I know. Time. Well, that's yeah, what yeah. I said at the beginning. It is a different time. Yeah. So, yeah, could I see it being? I compare it to The Walking Dead, but at the same time, I could see this be uh, the same kind of situation as The Walking Dead. Yeah, but I could see this being worth more than The Walking Dead. You know? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'll tell you this though: as soon as I think it's the right time, those books are out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, and obviously, definitely the cover A is the one everybody wants. But no, no, doesn't matter what cover, cover B, cover C. Yo, grade them. Exclusives. You know, grade your number ones, man. Um, even the later printings, grade them. You know what I mean? You, you know, you grade them now. You get them by the time the trailer comes out next year, or whatever the case is. You know what I mean? Uh, depending, you know who you grade with. Uh, but yeah, man. I listen. I I I like I like this idea of of, of them moving forward with this project because Sense Killing Children has been the hottest independent book for the past for a few years already. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm happy that Boom Studio is doing this. Uh, you know, this is given. Given, I feel like you're gonna see more to come with other stories. You know what I mean? Uh, definitely. Is this gonna like 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 what this free comic book day book of Sons Kill Children, Children now that's coming out is that gonna move like is that gonna be something now because of the announcement Eric of Sons Slaughter, now? yeah Eric you know what I mean? that's yet to be seen we'll see you know what I mean uh but yeah man I'm I'm excited for this something Kill the Children because James been talking about it since the beginning you know he's like read this read this read this and you know I've been reading it I've been reading it and it's good I have not finished my first volume though. I, I gotta finish reading it. We'll make that a yeah. project maybe coming soon. I always been saying that for a while. Uh Biggs, my man says something about Walking Dead here. He <laughs> yeah. says uh Walking Dead was only a seven thousand print run. Uh it came out in two thousand three. Graded was uh graded was only three years old at t- at the time. Uh there was no graded copies at that time. Yeah, yeah. All right, well <clears throat> it's a different time, but kind of similar. What I understand what Josh was trying to say though. Yes, yes. Uh, do you guys like The Witcher and have yeah, yeah. and they have an animated movie and they have uh, they are having five or six series on Netflix, really? Mm-hmm. Didn't know that, yeah. There was rumors that they were gonna bring in Mark Hamill to be like Vesemir and things like that, have him do his own show, I think, for Witcher. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go, villains. Is just like, your boy, so you don't feel left out, Gomez. Right? No, it's all good, brother. I'm just enjoying the conversation. Nah, definitely, man. Uh, so yeah, man. Uh, your stray dogs, man. You want to talk about your stray dogs? Uh, talking about that because stray dogs is, is another hot one that's been. There's yeah. only five issues. It's only a mini series at that, man. Yeah, it's only only. But there's a lot of printings, and the reason why this one's hot because they do a lot of homages. We were just talking with Josh. We were talking about the the was it one in ten coming out for the fifth printing. Fifth was it fifth print was the second printing for issue five. So. 
So that one's that one's uh that one's they're just doing a lot of homages when it comes to like like horror movies that are iconic to a lot of people. And I give so, it to them, and I give it to them. Those covers look real nice, those homages. Uh, I you know, I did thanks to look at and then Josh pointed out they make it in a crow, a crow one. And, and it's gonna be option through Paramount, I believe. Uh, a TV uh, animated series, I believe, a man, anime show. So that's one reason why too is starting big or something like that. So you know, everything's getting options, so everybody's trying to get that. Uh, they say that issue one was I, I shout out to uh, real quick to AS Comics. Um, I actually got this in the mail, he gave it to me at cover price. And we all know what issue one goes. This is another acetate. I do have two acetate. We, I covers. can't even. We can't even. It, it is, blurry. Is, blurry. is it blurry as fuck? Is, yeah. Not, yeah, it is blurry as fuck. But we can see. We know it's straight dogs. And we know but, it's straight uh, dogs. But uh, yeah, no, that, like I said, um, he, he gave it to me, I believe, at cover. So he said he had one left at the shop. So then he hooked me up. So I'm, I'm happy for that because I don't have the actual A cover. I just had two acetate covers. So. I don't have that book. Well, yeah, no, um, like I said, if you can find them in the shops, I've told one of my or J. Rod Ham, you find those books in the shop, pick them up. Uh, it's it's a book either to have or a quick flip because uh, a lot of people are looking for those books right now. And me, I kept all mine. I, I don't flip a lot of my shit. But I'm, I'm happy to own those. Yeah, bring back the nostalgia. It does, Radio Rod. That's, yeah. that's one thing. Yeah, I don't mind. You know what I mean? Even when DC was doing those um, movie posters, um, what, what the new fifty two was it? Yeah, I, I enjoyed those. I really liked yeah. the what, which one yeah, was the it? mask one, the Batman, the Joker one, the, the mask. Joker one was good. Uh, Miles, Miles, was Miles, good. Miles, Miles into the Dragon one. That one was dope. I like. I, I enjoyed that one. Yeah, the Batgirl Prince. Oh, purple. Oh yeah, Prince. that one too. See, so you know, all these are pretty dope. You know, to have man. Real quick, Tino seventy three is asking, uh, when is a free comic book date book coming out for uh, uh, August? August eighth, I think. August fourteenth, yeah. I think. Is it fourteen? Yeah, fourteen. So it's just not not far away, man. Not far away. So you just gotta wait there, man. Uh, my man, uh, Steve is saying, "Damn, this is a great conversation." Haven't taken the the plugs yet from CGC membership. Uh, all my books are raw. You know what, man? It, you know, if you feel like you need to encapsulate your books, it's fine. You know, if you don't feel like you need to, then don't do it. You know, what Broski said he has top loaders. He put his books in top loaders, and you know he's good with yeah, that. Yeah, my majority of my me? books are in top loaders. You know, just see, look, you know, they got the white, got that white, got that cocaine white, baby. Yeah, so you know, there's another purchase from A&S Comics. But, yeah, no, I'm happy to have what I can. FOCs, watch our FOCs on Friday so you don't miss out. Yes, I agree, man. Yeah. Shout out to my man Hood Rap, my man Ian right there from Team Nerd Her. Y'all already know, already said it, man, guys. Check them out at 10 p.m. Eastern, guys, all right? Um, yeah, they're on next. Yeah, it's 10 p.m. Yeah, Eastern. Yeah, make sure you guys sub up to them, guys. Guys, is dope, man. Uh, yes, <laughs> she likes it raw. That's right, baby. <laughs> uh so yeah man so street dogs has been hot man so that you know we just wanted to mention that look out for those man uh later printings of those and uh is the last is it is it the last time we'll see because i know it was five issue series is it the last time we're going to see straight dogs probably not no, I don't because think of so. how popular it's got so we might get a volume two we might get a a, a spin-off we don't know you know we'll see um but yeah and let me see uncle roman would say he, he got the rg bunker there you go uh, I like my book for all. Yeah, some people do. See, some people like their raw. Just buy your top loaders, protect them, you know? Because usually some people encapsulate to either to sell, to preserve them, or whatever the fuck, you know what I mean? But if you want to preserve them and, 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 as, safe, as safe as you can for uh, a great value, then get top loaders that my broski does and just put them in there and just keep them, you know? Uh, so we're moving on from there. Talk about Loki, man. Episode five, episode five, which I thought about uh, Loki episode five, guys. Uh, you know, Josh, you saw episode five. Uh, what do you think? Uh, is uh, is is what do you think about the series finale? The what the season finale? I should say the season because we're in season two of this. Uh, what do you think is it going to be? Uh, something that's big or something that's going to be a uh, an open ending? You know, season finale or what you think? Who is going to be the big bad supposedly? I think it will be Loki of some sort. I think it will be. Uh, I th- I I said it a couple weeks ago. I think it's going to be. Um, Sylvie, I do. I think either she's she n- is knowingly doing this, or it's like some other version of her, like a future self or something like that, that is doing this. Well, and that-, that was her nexus event was creating this whole the TVA and this for some greater purpose. I don't know what it would be. I think the the Kang thing is just too obvious. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. I, I 
really don't think they would put him into this show. Although if they did, I wouldn't be shocked by it either. Um, I just, and like I said, I think, uh, I think they've set it up now where she's a likable character and you think she's a very good character. And I think they don't think many people would think, uh, that they would, you know, do a switcheroo with her. So I think, I think it would make a lot of sense for them for that, for it to end like that. And I think in terms of how it will end, I think, I don't think it'll be open ended per se, I, I think it'll be sort of open ended, like the other shows have been leading into the next into phase four, but I don't know how much it'll be open ended leading into season two of Loki. So you think season two of Loki will be a, some totally different type of story? Yes. Okay, interesting. Uh, I feel like uh, I feel I feel kind of like what you say. Uh, the, it's going to be one of the variants of Loki. Uh, whoever's behind all this stuff um, with the the TVA, uh, you know, but I'm kind of like with Biggs too. That this will be something that it'll be an open ending for season two to happen. Uh, you know, you know who are we gonna get to see? We might get to see the big bad at the end of the last two minutes of the episode, and then that'll take place in season two. You know what I mean? Who knows? Uh, but I, either way, man, I've been enjoying it, and, and I feel like I, I don't care what anybody says. You know, they could say they could talk smack about Loki, how how has not been as good as whatever X and B. Uh, but I'll I've be. been enjoying it. I've been enjoying it since episode one. Uh, I, I feel like the dialogues in this in this seat in this show, it's been very very good. Uh, it made me like the character more. You know what I mean? Uh, Owen Wilson, Mobius has been awesome. Uh, Shorty, the the variant, has been dope. Um, so all, every every everybody that they have in the show, it's been do, go, um, dope. Well. And, and, yeah, yeah. And then people in the chat has been saying that this episode, episode five with the Easter eggs, definitely I caught those Easter eggs too, man. And uh, you know, throwing in a jar and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. All that was badass. It was dope. You know, I enjoy that. Um, so yeah, man. Uh, uni. Uh, so be whack. Uh, so yeah, guys. So the, you know, I, I I can't wait till Wednesday for episode six. Yeah. Season finale of uh, of Loki, uh, and you know when we'll see season two. Don't know that I don't know. Uh, so yeah, man, uh, let's let's end up doing some show and tell, guys. We we'll do some show and tell, bro. Uh, Broski, you want to start off? Yeah, I can start off. I'll start off. Uh, I'll start off with uh, let's see right here. So uh, so we didn't do no uh, cover fires this Thursday because we didn't we didn't, uh, we didn't do the show we only did the FOC show, but on uh, Mike Morello's uh, cover fires he did have this one right here which might be blurry but gives a shit as uh, a basilisk <laughs> number of uh, the B cover. I thought this was a dope ass cover. I did order the Virgin on it. I thought it was pretty dope, and um, as well as uh, this one right here, it's uh, the the nice house at the lake. This is the B cover as well. So these were part of his uh, honorable mention on cover fires. Mind you that Mike Morelos from CBSI he does he does uh, cover fires of the week. So be on the look down there on the CBSI website. Uh, one book that I, I like that I pre ordered because uh, Josh knows I love this shit. Uh, it's a uh, Vampirella. Uh, uh, this is a uh, Shannon Mir cover. So I thought it was pretty dope. Shannon Mir, Manchester, Connecticut. <laughs> oh. And then um, my boy um, Marco Mastrasso. He did this cover right here. I think this was the B cover of Amparilla 21. And then I was able to pick up uh, Big Easy's favorite, Red Room number two. Uh, I think they're one in, one, in, one in 10 and the one in five. Okay, okay. So I was able to get those. I did not see these as a shop. So shout out to AS Comics for hooking me up on that. Uh, like I showcased this one before, I was able to, I did pre order two, but he got allocated. So I was able to get at least one for the PC. They are coming out with a second print of white. Uh, so mm. be on the lookout on that. So, so you can, I think you should have pre-ordered last week, but uh, you got that Stray Dogs. I got this for cover price, it, like I've told you before. And then I was able to get these two for sixty. Uh, these are uh, Batman New Fifty Twos, the 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 um the regular cover, the A cover, the A cover for New Fifty Twos. I I never I've always had the Walmart. I got one signed, given to me by a uh, Joker. So I have that in my PC, one of my boxes. Appreciate it. Personalized um, too by by Scott Snyder, yeah, bro. Yeah, personalized back then, but I kind of get more. I seen the I seen the price for these, and uh, I offered I did throw them an offer, and then I went to shop <laughs> this week, and I got this one for forty. No, yeah, forty. This is the actual one in twenty five uh, Ethan Van Skyver, uh, one in twenty five on uh, New Fifty Two. So I kind I kind of no this is my second one. 
So I do, now I have two sets. No, I'm trying, to, and then um, <clears throat> let's see. I I do pick up this book, but I ha I'm so behind on it. But it's Canto number three. I think it's the last of the mini series. He's coming out with a new series this Wednesday. So new, a whole new series. I think this is the third story arc of Canto. So that's pretty dope. And I, that might be an option to be a, a TV show as well. Um, we live. This is this is a, a this is a third print, I believe, with a fourth print of mm. uh, We Live Number Five. I thought this was a dope cover. I, I didn't see this at LCS, but I was able to obtain and pre-order my my book because a lot of times, then after like second or third printing, if it's not a hot book, they will not get the fifth or fourth printing of the of books. This was a hot. This is a key first appearance cover, but you never know with this book. And then um, I, I I was out of town, and I was able to get this one. This is the one in I think one in ten uh, Eve Number Two. I got this for like eight bucks at a shop, so I was happy with that because the secondary market was going for double or triple the value. So I was able to get that book, and then uh, same with the ANS Comics. I did get this one right here. I think this 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 book the first first parent of trench, but uh, it's not a, a a big key, but something to have in the PC. Mm -hmm. I think it's my second copy, and this is my second copy. Of this one, this is the first parents of Wally we Wally West. So it's Flash, I believe, or something like that. So I was able to obtain that. And I um, think that's pretty much pretty much it. And then be sure to check out our show on Thursday. I'll, I'll be reading this and trying to break it down on the Spawn Universe. So I'll, this would be one of the books I'm going to be reading and, and, and dissecting myself because it does, has a few stories on this. And just be on the lookout because I do like Spawn a lot and I do not talk a lot about Spawn besides what we had our issue. So, yeah. Um, yeah. What up, Chalula? Hey, my Bay Area amigo right there. Family right there. Family. But uh, Damn, that's, pretty, that's pretty much it. And then one book I am going to be reading that I need to catch up, and we talked about it. It's not terrible. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no. So, yeah, that's uh, I got I got to catch up on that. Yeah, definitely. I got to read yeah, that one there. Something yeah. I'm going to be reading, and we, me and Joe can talk about it off air or whatever, whenever, whenever we get a chance to. But uh, <clears> that's pretty much my, my haul, what I grabbed. I grabbed a few other things, but they're, like, not meant to be graded. So I'll, I'll talk about – I'll talk, show those some other time. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. Yeah, real Ooh. quick, man. I, I just want to show off um just a bunch of not to, not Nottingham books that I end up getting, man. Uh, I forgot what yeah. printing is. This is number one. I got that one that's recently, man. Thing. Just of issue two. There you go. Right. And issue three. I think this one is an issue four. <laughs> that's the first print on that issue four. So I picked those up from Mad Cave. Shout out to Mad Cave Comics. Uh, and then uh, last thing I'm gonna show off that I picked up was my Marvel Legends. Doctor Doom. Okay. You know, I ordered this through Amazon. I wanted the damn freaking uh, uh um what the hell is this fucking name? Fucking um Resco. Resco? There you go. Resco? I wanted the Resco. There you go. I wanted the Resco one and it didn't get I they, they canceled my order on Amazon. Uh, I don't know why, but you know oh, it is what it is. Uh so that's all I picked up, man. Uh Josh, you have something? Yeah. All right, let's go. It's your turn, brother. <laughs> uh Toretto, there you go. Calm down. Yeah, Beverly. Beverly. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite uh, cover of Gunslinger. Yeah, you know what? The Gunslinger was nice, man. I, I like it. A lot of people say he looked a little suspect, but I, I enjoyed it. You know, I like it. And uh, while Josh is getting his Action Comics number one and De Detective Comics twenty seven put together, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you. Damn, a nice Joker, Doom. Yeah, your Joker. You do wear capes? No, I don't. I don't. Um. I don't know. I check my son because I know he does um his um stop motion. I right, got bro. Hmm. So, yeah, what up, um, Arsenio? Little little story that I told these guys about. So yesterday, I uh, I had to run up to my job to pick something up, and I go to this place that I I go there like I don't know once every three four months something like that. It's mainly toys and action figures and sports cards it's, it's a real shitty shop and uh this guy usually has comics but not that m much and it's all like crap like beyond crap like 25 cent stuff so I, I go there just to you know just to see and uh he's like yeah i'm not selling comics anymore um and i wanted to be like well yeah it's probably a good idea because you don't have anything so i'm walking outside <laughs> and uh there's this kid taking a long box out of his car. So I walk over to him and I'm like, Hey man, if you're going in there to sell books, like he don't take books anymore. 
And I'm like, well, you know, what do you, what do you got in there? Are you, are you selling, you know, that stuff? And like, I could spot this dude, like from a mile away that I'm not making fun of the guy, but, and I don't know for a fact to me looked like a, a drug addict. Okay. Right. Acted like it too. So I'm like, yeah, what do you, you know, what do you got in there? I'm like, are you willing to sell these? He's like, yeah, that's what I was bringing them here for. I'm like, well, you know, what do you got? He's like comics. Yeah. Well, no shit. I know you got comics. So I'm flipping through it and, uh, I get like four books in. I'm like, well, you know, what are you trying to get for these? And he's like, honestly, I just want like 50 bucks. I'm like, well, what's the best book in here? He's like, I don't know. And it's like a lot of, you know, 90s, early 2000s mishmash of stuff. Um, you know, a lot of just filler stuff. So I end up buying the box for 50 bucks. And... Uh, well, not all these books were in it, but some of these <laughs> books were in it. So, so this was, so this was in it, dude. I'll do whatever. So that was in there. Okay, Nick Uh, this was in there. I actually just got another one of these today. So that's first nice. uh, cameo Winter Soldier. Only one was in there. <laughs> Josh is savage. Yeah, man. Hey, listen, man. One of these was in there, and then I got this other one today, too. So that's a hot book right now, First uh, Red Skull's Daughter. I like all this stuff around. Um, oh, Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier, yeah. Those yeah. covers are nice, too, That the, the whole Captain America shit. Uh, nope, that wasn't in there. That wasn't in there. That wasn't in there. That wasn't in there. But Pookie does what was in there, and how you should know that this story is true, because I don't like this character, really. I certainly don't like the book. And I certainly wouldn't pay money for it unless this book fell into my lap. But this was in there. <laughs> and it's a, re it's a really nice copy. It's in the nine somewhere, for sure. So then I took the box down the road to this other guy who doesn't? Who really specializes in like sports cards, but does sell some comics. I haven't. He I, that shop hasn't been open in, in quite some time either. And uh, I'm like, yeah, I just like I didn't know that guy who was working there. Um, I don't think I've ever saw him, so I just kind of pretend like I didn't even know comics. And I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to sell these. He's like, what are you trying to get for him? I'm like, I don't know, man. Just give me a price. He's like, fifty bucks. I'm like, oh, wow, it's meant to be. Fifty bucks and fifty bucks. So I just got a bunch of books for free for 50 bucks. So then, uh, um, oh, so here's some more books. Uh, Thanos 16, Silver Surfer Black, for Silver Surfer Black. There we go. Uh, I got this today, not because it's hot. I mean, well, yes, because it is hot, but also I don't have it. I need it for my run. It's one of the few ASM keys I don't have. So there's your debut of the uh, huh. Mark II. Bulletproof armor, yeah. He wants a cheeseburger. I didn't have this one either. Ah, nice. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's the very, oh, negative variant. <clears throat> Got this from Richie today. Second black mask. Very that's nice dope. copy. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, this was in there too. Oh, for uh, what is that? First Penny Parker? Yeah, I picked that one up for two bucks. This was in there too. And this was in there too. Okay. You know, those aren't huge books. Uh, then what else do I got here? Oh, these these were in there. Ah. Uh, First, uh, what is it? I had a question. Darth Bane, I think. Uh, I think I have that one. This is First Metroid. First Samus, I mean, same thing in comics. Uh, what else? Um. Oh. Oh shit, family. The, these weren't in there. I got these someplace else. So that's the variant to one eighty eight. So that's yeah, Sun, King. Sun King again. I got this. Did mm. I? That's first Hondo. Cholo. Chicho. <laughs> Hondo something. <laughs> I picked this up for I know Tina was looking for a copy. Um, and then you got uh, these, which is this is first Mandalore. So, oh, there you go. yep. 
And then that's first Jason and Jaina Solo, Han and Leia's kids, before they made them non-canon. And then uh, this came in this week, Jungle Action 22. Hondo Anaka. Yeah, that's this is first Soul Strangler. This is part of the when uh, Black Panther fights the KKK. Really good story. <laughs> that Hondo's a pricey book, my man Wilbur said. Hey, yo, that man is shit, Josh. Look, dude, you got a fucking hell of a steal for damn fucking fifty dollars, man. I tell you that. No, man. for free. For for free, you're right yeah. because he sold the box for fifty dollars yeah. afterwards, which is, was good hustle, man. That was a good hustle. <clears throat> Shout out to the crackhead like over there, in Connecticut. Like that, that, yeah, shit like that does not happen to me. It doesn't. But it's just funny how right place, right time. If I was there, like, you know, five minutes earlier, and or left, you know, ten seconds earlier. Wouldn't yeah, never happen. It wouldn't have happened. You're right. Because yeah. uh, I was in and out of that store like within a minute. <laughs> All right. Well, this is the end of our show, man. We did our show and tell, man. It was good topics, man. We had, man. I appreciate everybody in the chat, man. Uh, make sure you all tune in uh, for our FOC, man. If you, I don't know when is the best time. Well, it's too late for DC today. You know what I mean? Definitely get your orders in by tomorrow for Independent and Marvel, guys. Uh, you know, so check our FOC video, man, is on our channel, man. Uh, and then you know, tune in on Thursday for new combo theory reviews and cover fires with Mike Morello from CBSI again, guys. Uh, and then you know, we'll tune in next week, maybe next week. We'll see if we'll do this weekly or bi weekly. The show, uh, you know, so uh, but yeah, man, uh, that, that's all we have, man. Um, let my man um, say that, um, last piece, uh, Josh, yeah, I don't, um. It was nice to get back to uh, to form here. I, right. You know, I haven't been on this show, and I think in like a month. Yeah, because last show you wasn't on. Yeah. A&S, yeah, you wasn't on when ANS was on. You're right. Yeah. So it was definitely nice to get back into uh, the swing of things here. It was nice. So thank you everybody for coming by. Yes, yes, man. Uh, Broski, on you. Yeah. Like I said, great with the show. We got a couple shows coming out. The, was it the New York Order show tomorrow? Make sure that any spotlight. And um, like I said, you know, it just shows to say the fact that um, they're out there. Be patient. Don't have to go crazy spending all that extra that money for books. They'll come to you at times, you know, you least expect it. I found books before. I found books at a cheap at areas where I least expected to find anything. And I just, you, know, you never know. So be patient when it comes to collecting. If the price ain't right, that's the, that's what I'm gonna leave with. It's just. Be patient because they're just comics and just don't don't go out spending your savings and all that stuff on stuff that you may up tailored online for half of what you're paying for right at the time. There you go, man. And uh again, like, like even like, like Josh said, man, it feels good to go back into you know regular rhythm. Uh going doing our show. I love talking talking comics. Listen, man, I did the auction yesterday, and like I told Broski earlier before the show, I enjoy doing this more auctions, you know. I, I mean uh the auctions kind of like you know kind of tire me out already, man. And, and that's another one. You know what, man? I know you, you're supposed to put it on, on, on the Warriors show, but we got to get Tito on this show too, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, Tito's a great guy. Yeah, definitely. We had him on with the near, uh, Seeking Near Mint show last week on Tuesday. It was nice. Yeah, how's it going? Wait, from Gucci. What up, what up? Uh, he says, Josh, make sure you check your email in the next couple days. All right, he will. He'll be waiting like this. All right, just for your email. All I'm, right? bad. I'm bad at checking my email. I'm not going to lie. Uh, and then my man, Issues, yes, no one wants to follow Josh, obviously. With what he just showed for fucking for free. The new Mo- new Mutants, then he ain't dog. We had a new blast. You know what I mean? Hey, uh, like I said, that, shit, that kind of shit never happens to me. Never. I look forward to it. Yeah, it feels good to be back on YouTube, man. It was great. I ain't going to lie. It was great taking a few weeks off, Uh, uh you know, Doing vacation stuff, doing family, you know, real real life shit. You know what I mean? Uh, you gotta do that once in a while. I gotta reset your batteries and then come back. You know, because yeah. I mean? if, hey. if you keep doing this, you get tired and tired and tired of doing this. Shit. I'll, I'll say this: you know, it sucks being the be, setting these records on paying for some of these books that I've paid for in the last couple of weeks. But you know, <laughs> it also does feel good to set the record, probably for the new low on a, on buying a new Mutants ninety eight, paying zero dollars. Yeah. Hey, listen, that's a come up, bro. That's a come up. You know what I mean? Breaking records over there. You know, <laughs> how many books? How many books? How many books? Yeah. How many books? What? How many books you broke records? I don't know. Okay. Eight, maybe. 
No, but no, no, no. I'm, I'm sure more than that. That's not something I'm that proud of. Eh, you know, but hey, you are, you are in the top ways. sellers in those, I guess, you know. But yeah, man, uh, this is it, man. I uh, appreciate you guys, man. Obviously, man, check me out on other channels, man. Uh, Tuesdays in the spotlight with Thorough, guys. Don't miss that. Uh, don't miss out on Home of New York Warriors. I don't know. I don't know if he's doing a show tomorrow because I know he did Coffee Comics. He did Auction. So, yeah, maybe he needs a break. We need a break. I know I need a break uh, doing all these. Uh, but definitely stay tuned on Thursday for our show, Friday FOC for CBSI, uh, Saturday Coffee and Comics, and then, you know, us again on Sunday and just back in rotations. Got rain on. So something else comes up. We probably decide to do something else, something new, add something else to our channel. Uh, but we will let y'all know. Uh, you know, but uh, let me see. Where, am I missing anything else? Right, make sure y'all sub up to my broskies here. They got their own stuff going on. Uh, you know, Gomez does his haul videos. Josh does his unboxings, man, for CGC. So definitely sub them up, guys. All right. Uh, and besides that, man, I want to say everybody, you know, we're back, baby. We're back. In full effect, baby. Have a good night, y'all, man. Peace. Later. Merry Christmas. <laughs>